Okay, so I'm ready to assemble my teapot. I have my spout and I have my four legs. Okay, have an extra one. Um, three legs are better than four. This is the spout I made in the spout video. This is the handle I made in the handle and feet video and I made a little knob that's going to go on the top of my teapot lid. So I got all my components. They're all at the same consistency of firmness or moistness. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to plot out where I'm going to put my spout and I'm going to cut the spout to fit. I'm going to get it ready to attach, but I'm not going to attach it until after I put my feet on. That's the plan. So first off, I want to show you right here on the top of my lid, I made a, I put a little ball of clay and I took a ballpoint pen and just made that little design and I did the same on the other side. So that tells me right which way the lid fits perfectly. That's the way I cut it. And when I did the um, lid and flange demo, I drew a line across both pieces before I cut the lid out and that's how I know that's right where it fits. So I'm going to take the lid off during this process. Put it over here. Now, the concept here is I'm going to be taking my fettling knife and I'm going to be attaching it. Um, this is a pretty big teapot spout. I don't need all of that material. And again, you don't want to attach your spout way up high. Uh, let me get a better filming here. You don't want to attach the spout way up high. That means you'd have to have it almost tilted and it would come out the top at the same time it came out the spout. And I don't need it this long. So I'm going to show you the trick I use to integrate the spout. I think I'm going to take it off this bat for a second uh, and just put it right here. Uh, and now, what I want to have is, this is the opening, I want to have this decorative design on the side of the teapot. So that means my spout is going to be put right here. So I'm going to put the spout where I think I want it. And again, I can, this is firm, it's not moving, but if I put a little bit of pressure, it will, the clay will still bend slightly, and that's the consistency we want. The concept here is I'm going to put the spout behind the teapot, and I'm going to try and find, you can see the visual thing, let me do this for the camera. I'm going to try and find how the spout best integrates with the body of the teapot. And so I'm going to move it in and out, but I put the spout behind it. That's the concept. Now watch what I'm going to do. As I put it behind it, I'm going to use the fettling knife and I'm going to be following the contour of my teapot body and marking that on the spout. So I'm going to get a look-see of what I want right now. And then I'm going to extend this knife and I'm following the contour. And what I'm trying to do is attempt to do is to mark the contour of the body of the teapot onto the spout itself. Okay? So it just takes a little bit of time. So there's the cut that I made. And all I did was follow the contour. And I'm going to visually check it to make sure it's where I want it. And you got to get your eye right up on there to get the look. So there, I remade the mark. Now, the concept here is I'm going to be cutting this. So I want to cut this, and I want to keep it in the vertical position. This is the way I want it. If I have it at an angle and I make this cut, then my spout is going to be at an angle. So I'm going to turn it upside down. It's easier to hang on to, and it'll be in line. Now, with my fettling knife, I'm going to cut that contour that I scribed into the surface of the spout and try to keep it pointing straight down and try to make a uniform cut. There I go. There is my spout. See how I cut it and it's slightly arced? That arc is matching the arc of the body of the teapot. So I have a lot of extra clay in there, even though I did hollow it out. So I'm going to thin it out just a little bit. Again, um, the more weight you can take off the body and elements of your teapot, the lighter it will be and the more functional it will be. So I just thin that out and I'm trying to get it to about a quarter of an inch all the way. And again, I don't want a bunch of scratches inside there. So I'm going to take my paintbrush. Here's the small one. 
There's a large one here. I'm going to take this wet paint brush and I'm just going to get in there and smooth that. And bring the water closer. So I'm just smoothing this. Okay, smoothing the inside. Now this is ready to attach. What I want to do first is to size it up where I want it and figure out if my cut was accurate and to make any adjustments. So I'm going to make this a little more oval by just pinching it. So there's my teapot spout. If I was making an elephant, that would be kind of neat, you know? I mean, that would be almost an elephant trunk. I could just put ears and some eyes and I would have an elephant. But this is going to be, I'm going to move it just a little bit higher. And um, I'm not happy with it. I'm going to change the angle. I'm, I'm experimenting. I'm going to have it a little bit taller. I'm going to make another scribe mark. Right, that's why we have so much extra room on that back end to make adjustments. And I'm going to cut it again. So you always want to cut your spout and have it integrated into the body of your teapot. You just don't want to slap it on the end. Whatever the end looks like of your spout, just slap it on. That's not the concept here. Okay, a little bit better. Right? And you can see how that's going to follow the arc of the teapot body. Now there's my mark here, so right here in line. Let's see how we did. A lot better. Okay, so I'm going to give you a front view. And there's my spout. And again, you don't want it crooked, right? You want to get it directly in line. So I'm going to turn it towards me to get it just the way I want it. And now I'm going to get my modeling stick the pencil point and again make sure it is straight up and down 90 degrees and what I'm going to do is I'm going to scribe the outside contour of my spout and I'm going to scribe right onto the body of my teapot all right let me get it lined up again this takes time but take your time to do this that's um how it'll look good that's how you're going to get a good grade this is one of the components I'm going to be looking for when I evaluate your teapot, is is your spout nice and straight? So there's my scribe mark. That's going to tell me where I'm going to attach this, okay? Now, what I do next is inside this circle, I want to cut an opening about this big. I'm going to use the similar size as the opening here, right? The opening here is going to match what I'm going to take out here. And all the rest is going to be scored. So I'm going to score that now. And again, I'm just scoring straight up and down. And the outside of my teapot body is dry. So I'm going to add a little water to score. And don't worry, I'm scoring all over. And I'm going to cut that inside hole. I know how big it needs to be. So that's what I'm doing next. Okay. Now my slab is about right here. So I'm just gonna make sure this opening that I cut for my uh, spout doesn't go into my base slab. And that's kind of important, okay? That's a pre-moisten. I wanna add my feet before I do anything else, okay? And I have, I'm gonna put three feet on. I don't want my one foot to be here and my two in the back. I wanna space it. so. Well, before I attach my spout, I'm going to attach my feet. So I'm going to turn this upside down. And I'm going to visualize. Visualize a clock dial. And on a clock dial, let me get a good look out of it. This is 12 o'clock. This is 4 o'clock. Okay. And that's 8. So 12, 4, and 8 we'll divide the teapot up into thirds. Okay, and so that's what we're gonna go for. So I'm gonna do this next. And the same thing, I have, let me get my four feet, I'm only gonna use three of them, but I'm gonna put them directly on top and I'm gonna just check to make sure they're close. This one has a little divot and I'm not gonna use it, I'm gonna use the flat one. I'm going to double check, 12, 
four and eight. So that's a pretty good balance right there. And I'm just checking to make sure that this is where my spout is gonna be and these two legs in front are spaced and this one here is gonna be directly in line with the spout. Now I'm gonna scribe. And again, knowing that these are hollow, I'm gonna to have to make an air hole for these two. So I'm gonna just stand up here and scribe my feet. Another thing I also do is if you want to make sure that you're going to get it lined up just right, you can put a little mark onto your foot and the base. And now I'm going to score and attach each one of these right now. So there's my mark. And that, I use that mark to show me the direction of scoring. And that's the tool that hollowed those out. So score, I do one foot at a time. Okay, score these in line. Again, it's always good to have a couple of paint brushes, different sizes. Um, when we bond these, it's always good to use a paint brush after you scratch to attach and get it to stick. And then we will bond these together and clean up the edge with a paintbrush. So I have my scoring. I just need to add some water. Get that nice and wet. Okay, I'm going to line up my mark. I'm going to give it a little twist to lock in. And then I'm going to use my paintbrush to smooth and clean up that connection point. Okay. There's one. And that's in there. You do the next one. Two more to go. Oh. Again, do each step. And I like to, if I'm going to have elevated feet, I like to do that before I attach my spout. And sometimes I'll attach my feet and let it firm up quite a bit before I even attach my spout. But I always like to plan where my spout is going to go. Um, before I actually um, attach my feet. Um, if you attach your spout first, it's gonna be hanging down, it's gonna be a little awkward, um, but you can figure it out as you go. I, I like this assignment. Um, you get to start, you got multiple pieces. Um, you start to work with the balance and symmetry of a handle if you're going in that direction with your form. You can also, um, I need some more water. And you know, make just a classic teapot your first time and then you can start to uh, go in a direction may have a uh, more whimsical or anthropomorphic, uh, theme based. Making just a clean teapot, uh, you know, sometimes having it super clean and everything else is kind of more difficult than creating a theme. A theme can use, can be used to disguise flaws in the body of your teapot or in your spout. So some options here. Okay, so last uh, foot to attach. this one okay so again if we're trying to lighten the piece up so at every opportunity we can thin it out um, you know making a coil you might trap air but if we open it up like that um, you know that will take some of the weight off and possibly prevent air being trapped and then you know, the next thing to do is to make sure that you have an air hole. Wherever you trap air, air has to have a, a way to escape, and that is really important. So before I flip it over, again, all of my air holes are going to be uh, put in an area that 
generally is not seen. It's going to be hidden, so I'm going to put the air holes on the inside. Now, what I like to do, I have three legs. I have a bat that is not warped. I'm going to put this directly on here. Okay, and I have one of these. These are called a, a speed level or torpedo level. I'm going to put it there. And look at that, we got a high end here. So I'm going to push down. Just And this doesn't take much adjustment. There, now we're just about level. So if you had it uneven, or you wanted to give the illusion that your teapot was rearing back, that's fine. But if you're going for a level, and that's locked in. So that's good. Now, well, it's upside down. I'm going to sign it. and just put my signature on it. Now I'm ready to flip it over and attach my spout. Now I'm gonna put it on a bat. Okay. There, and there's my, where's my spout's gonna be? Okay. So at this point, I'm ready to cut my opening and I'm gonna, my base slab ends about right there. So I'm gonna go and again, don't saw, just push the blade through the material. Don't saw, be gentle, go slow. Use your index finger to guide the blade, okay? There. Now you can do this. I'm gonna take this bigger brush. Again, this is a going to be for a food tea I can burnish this I'm going to add more water where the score marks are I think I might even come back and just re-emphasize the scoring a little bit some of it got squashed okay my spout I'm going to check it it needs to be scored so I'm going to score that and again in the same direction if you're doing all lines, have all the lines go in the same direction. So that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, more water. It doesn't hurt to have water. All right now, here's the important part. I'm going to put this on. I'm going to turn it towards me until I get it. Again, we don't want a spout that's crooked. We don't want it leaning forward too low. Remember, the height of the spout determines the height of the water that can be contained in the teapot. If my spout was really low, then I would only be able to put so much water in my teapot. We can always trim it if it's too tall. So now let me get it in my position. I'll line it up. And after I get it, I'll let you see it, okay? There. So I'm looking, it's looking pretty straight right now. I'm just gently, look at, I'm gently twisting it to get it to bond. You can move it up and down, wiggle it back and forth, but when you stop, just make sure it is straight up and down. I mean, if you wanted to be really a perfectionist, you can go like this and try to achieve at 90 degrees there there's my spout for this little teapot let me bring the camera up just a little so you can start to see the finished thing so there's my spout now what i want to do i want to make sure i got a really good bond and this is the technique i've developed i take the chisel end of my modeling stick or screwdriver tip and i'm going to hold this perpendicular to the surface of the teapot body and I'm gonna follow the contour of my spout all the way around, and I'm gonna go in about a sixteenth of an inch, and I'm compressing where those two pieces meet, the spout and the body of the teapot. And in doing that, I kind of compress that seam where those two pieces meet. And as you can see, I left a groove. Let me bring it closer so you can see it. You see that groove? 
Okay, now that was holding the tool vertical. I held the tool vertical. Now I'm gonna lay it flat and I'm gonna compress that back a little bit. So here I go, I'm gonna flatten this, what I just did. And for me, when I make teapots, I like, I mean, I celebrate the separateness of each of the components. So, you know, the spout, yeah, it was attached to the teapot. For me, if I'm making a teapot, if I'm making an elephant teapot, then I might make effort to try and really smooth and integrate it to make it look like it grows out of it. But there, now look, now you can see I did it the other way and this kind of welding, right? Now look at what I do next. I'm gonna take a good sized brush, water, and I'm just gonna burnish and smooth. And that kind of compression on that seam really um, makes a good bond. Now sometimes this body might be soft, your teapot might be soft, and I wanna show you a way you can recover. If your spout starts to fall forward on you, you can take a piece of clay, and if you have it on a board, you can take a piece of clay and just gently squeeze and create a support underneath the spout so it doesn't shift and move on you while it's drying. And this clay and that clay will dry at the same time, so it won't break. If I put a rigid thing that wasn't clay to support, um, as it dried, the clay will dry, but the rigid thing that is non-clay material won't, and you can get cracks. So now I'm gonna come around again and burnish, and I'm just paying attention to make sure it's at a 90 degrees, it's looking good, making any adjustments. And while we're doing that, now I'm getting ready to add my handle. So, and this could firm up a little bit more, but this is the next step. I'm going to add my handle. All right, and I could cradle the handle here. The handle is firm, look at that. I turn it at a 90 degrees, it's not moving. So that's what we want. Now I'm gonna turn it to my perspective for a second, just to get a look-see. Yeah, you know what, I'm thinking, how about that? I'm bringing it in like this. And I'm gonna celebrate this negative space in between the spout and the handle. I'm gonna attach it like that. Yeah, I think that's gonna be interesting, just like that. So what I need to do, first off, is make sure it's in line. If you have, can get help at home, that would be great to help support it while you scribe it. I'm gonna do it by myself here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a mark on each side of where the handle is gonna connect to the body of the teapot. I use the uh, pencil point here. And this is gonna tell me where I'm gonna score to make this attachment. And believe me, in doing this, I've had many a handles fall and get destroyed. So it, some stuff happens, okay? And when that happens, you just make another one. So I have my score points. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna now score this and I'm using water. And I don't know exactly, I know where the handle's gonna attach to the body of the teapot now, cause I made the scribe marks, but I don't know where it's gonna come in contact to the handle itself yet, exactly. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do next. This is a little trick. Again, I'm really scoring it well. And I'm trying using water to build up a paste, okay? And that's important. I'm going pretty deep right now. It's in line, it's looking good. Yeah, now, look at what I do. If I'm gonna know how it's gonna work, where it's gonna go on the handle, I'm gonna put it back on the piece and get it in line. And since that is real wet clay, it's gonna leave a mark on the handle exactly where I need to score on the handle, okay? So I don't know where to score in the handle. Look at the two wet marks. And now I know where to score. I'll have to come back on the teapot and rescore again, but that's a good trick to do. And for this big of a handle, that isn't a very big connection point. So I might need a support and I might need to buttress the connection with a coil. And generally with handles that are gonna get used, that's gonna be a stress point when you use it. 
And so using a small coil to strengthen the connection point is always a good idea. Again, re-moistening, re-scoring. And if I score past where my connection is, the two pieces, I can always smooth with a paintbrush and if necessary, add small pieces of clay. So I'm ready to bond. Again, you might need help holding this until you get your all done and it starts to firm up. It's always good to have the blow dryer close if you need to spot dry, okay? So I'm gonna get this into position I can see. And I'm gonna make a connection point here. Here and here. Again, you're always focusing, trying to keep it in line. Yeah, let's see here. There we go. And this handle is just a little soft. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to blow dry this just a hair. Okay, don't breathe. There's my handle. I need to bond it. So what I'm going to do is take little tiny micro coils with some of this semi-firm clay. Same consistency, right? And I'm going to take a micro coil, really small, like that. And I'm going to put it around my connection point. And I'm going to do the same technique I did for my spout and make that bond stronger. And that's necessary, okay? So. Yep. So it's kind of like welding a little bit, you know? We're bonding two pieces of clay together and we're using... Um, the clay to add extra material. Then we're using the modeling stick to really get a good bond so it'll stay. And that's the goal. And again, take your time and, you know, make sure your pieces are of similar consistency. Make sure your handle holds the, sh if your clay is soft and your handle can't even hold the shape, it's not the time to attach the handle. Let the handle dry out and firm, not bone dry, but let the handle dry out and firm up so it holds its shape before you make any attempt to attach your handle. And that's really important. And um, you'll be successful at it. Again, if your handle is slumping, it's too soft. Take it off and blow dry it, firm it up. I put a nice fat coil here and I'm just, like I said, welding it together and then taking all the excess but taking your time to clean it up and doing the detail any little dent any little flaw on your piece um, you know as it starts to firm up take a paintbrush and a wet finger and start to clean those areas up or disguise it with decoration disguise it with texture um, texture is a great way to um, move the eye around and have it have your piece successful is your eyes bouncing around the form just having this negative space and the negative space in this area and this creates a focal point where your eye can move around and it creates interest okay so this is real time so I'm not editing and you're not just seeing glimpses of it. I don't have that capacity with uh, my computer and this camera. So this is an all-in-one thing. So 
I will come back and clean that up, but I want you to see, I'm gonna get it in line. Can you see my foot, my handle? And that is all in line with the spout. Let me turn it this way. Okay, that's what we want. Lastly, this is my knob. Essentially, it's the same thing as shape as my foot. This is kind of tall. This is solid. I'm going to hollow it out before I attach it to my um, lid. I'm going to take some off. Okay. And I'm just going to open it up. If there's air bubble in there, it could blow up. I'm going to go like this. You know what I didn't do? I didn't make air holes for my feet, so I'll do that now too. I just remembered. So, there. So I lightened that up. I'm gonna put this in the center. Okay. Scratch to attach. And this, I, the air hole can go all the way through to the inside of the lid. And I keep the plastic on my lid until I attach the knob so I can lift the lid up out of my teapot. That's kind of important, you know? Yeah. Now I can take this off. I got my marks. That air hole goes all the way through. I'm going to re-emphasize it again for my lid. It goes all the way up into my knob. And I'll clean that up after it firms up a little bit. There's my lid. Okay. And then lastly, I didn't do is to get the needle tool. And where are you? I'm going to make those air holes. Here's the needle tool. So I'm going to come in from the underside and at least make two holes where my feet are and wiggle it. And that will make sure my feet don't blow up. That's why you never let your piece dry out. Let it firm up in plastic, but don't let it dry out until you know you have the air holes. Because if you wait until it's bone dry, you're going to have to try and chisel air holes in. And if you forget, it'll blow up. So there is the assemblage of my teapot. Right? Spout. And that's the end of this video. Next time you see it, I'm going to clean it up. And I'm going to um, add some decoration on this. So that's the end of this video. Assemblage of teapot.